I am so looking forward to the Advent season here at Covenant Presbyterian Church. We have Advent dinners planned for each Wednesday night of the Advent season. We'll explore various countries and the way cultures experience Advent in their own regions. We'll also be doing a movie called The Star with our children, youth, families, and children of all ages are invited to attend. Our youth will be baking and decorating cookies to share with their families as well as the church family. And we have Christmas concerts on the slate as well. Check out our website at www.covroanoke.org to find out all the details. We look forward to celebrating Advent joy through those who dream, which will be our theme this Advent season. for the chiming of the hour and the presentation of the word. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church on this second Sunday in Advent. Some notes uh, in regard to covenant life this morning. Um, we extend our sympathy and prayers to John and Jenny Fettison's daughter-in-law, Carolyn, and her family on the passing of her mother on Thanksgiving morning. And we also extend our sympathy and prayers to John and Mary Jane McMillan and their family on the passing of Mary Jane's beloved aunt, Judy. 
um, who passed away on Sunday, November 28th. A memorial service was held just this past week in Virginia Beach. So we ask that you remember each of these families and lift them up in prayer um, throughout this week. Our chancel flowers this morning are given to the glory of God and in celebration of two wedding anniversaries. We celebrate with Will and Carol Dibling on their 50th wedding anniversary and Brian and Kathy Slack in celebration of their 51st wedding anniversary. So thank you uh, for this uh, celebration and glory to God in, in honor of their love. An important note about our worship service today, in the bulletin you'll see that we have a hymn of peace that will be sung um, before the charge and benediction. You might note that this um, hymn was arranged by Eric Nance, uh, the son of Roy and Sharon Nance, um, who worship here with us. And so um, it has a little extra special meaning to us this morning for that reason. And please note, when we do sing that hymn of peace, we will sing the first and third verses prior to the charge and benediction. In regard to announcements, I encourage you to take a close look at the blue insert found inside your bulletin. There are so many things going on here at Covenant, and I encourage you to take a close look to find out how you can get involved. Just a few quick notes, we have a Wednesday night dinner with a Christmas in Germany theme this upcoming Wednesday. On Saturday, the youth will be doing some cookie baking and decorating here at the church. And um, next Sunday, we will have a movie followed by pizza dinner. Uh, parents may want to plan ahead for that. We'd love to have your little ones. We'll take care of them if you need to go out and do any shopping for any reason this, this holiday season. So, and or, you're welcome to join us as well. It's now my pleasure to invite forward Kathy Slack, who is going to share a moment for mission. Good morning. If we were in Malawi, we'd be saying Moniri Mose. If we were in Guatemala, we'd be saying Buenos Dias. Uh, I'm representing the mission committee today to um, speak to you about our spirit of giving. You have an insert in the bulletin with all these other inserts. Uh, we decided that we would pretty much repeat last year's uh, thoughts since most of us didn't get here to see what we had laid out. And we have been working with Malawi actually since 2003. Alternative giving started in 2006. We've kind of given it different names, Spirit of Advent, Spirit of Christmas, Christmas giving, alternative giving. It's all about uh, giving to the international missions that we do support. Um, the Guatemala mission came about with Dr. Tim's, and uh, it has now moved to be part of the Roanoke Valley Medical Missions. Uh, they do provide surgical uh, assistance and different types of educational uh, setups when they do get to travel to foreign countries. And the Malawi mission, we are still working with the same people. We feel like there are other church, they feel like we're their other church, and providing for needs that are always going to be there. So if you look at the uh, flyer, it gives a little bit of information on both the missions. We're also going to be uh, helping with the, our mission co-workers in Malawi, and now the McGill's gym is in the Sudan and Somalia. Always a very dangerous uh, bit of work for him. And on the back is the basic form. If you decide you would like to help with these missions, uh, please just fill this in. And if you are giving a check to the office, make sure it's on your memo line as to what you would like this to go for. Uh, in Malawi, Kalikumbi Church, 
That's for education, worship, and Bibles. They try to give Bibles to all the uh, secondary students. With secondary school fees, when we started doing this, it, $140 would pay for a whole school year for a secondary student. The government only takes them to school to the eighth grade. Then they are tested if they're going to be able to go to secondary school, then they have to have funding. And if you remember, Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world. They live on about a dollar a day. Um, the hospital, there is a Kalakumbi clinic in Kalakumbi, so some of that uh, medical work is shared. Marion Shallow Wells, when we started this in 2006, it was about $300 a well. It's now $450. Uh, but they have already put in 3,000 wells in the last two months. Because of COVID, there's not been any possibility for uh, American teams to go over. It has all been trained now, and Malawians do all the work, which is quite an accomplishment. And the last one on there is major repairs on hospital vehicles. About eight years ago, we did a big campaign to repair. Some of these vehicles are 1985 Toyotas. And with the roads and uh, the, the uh, territory that they have to cover, they are shaken to pieces again, tires are gone. So there is a huge need for uh, funding for vehicle repair. And they're very capable of doing it. And there's a lot of jerry-rigging going on, but they have to keep these vehicles on the road. And for Guatemala, we're still supporting Dr. Sergio, uh, in the, Dr. Sergio Castillo in his clinic, and uh, also the School of the Deaf there. So we'd like to see if we can be generous, as we always have been, and help our uh, international mission teams as they continue to do their work. Uh, I'd like to have you join me in a celebratory call that Jennifer will understand. Jennifer will understand. If you just put your tongue kind of into your throat, will you do it with me? Here we go. So in the celebration of the Christmas spirit and in hoping that we can help our fellow international mission people will give the call of celebration. Now, I'm going to ask you to join me in celebrating. <laughs> Put your tongue kind of in the back of your throat. You don't sound like a chicken, but women will do this. It's not just in Africa. You hear this in Asia. You hear this in the Philippines. I'm not so sure about South America, but probably. So on the count of three, celebrate. One, Two, three. Thank you. Good morning. Your long range planning team met with the session just a few weeks ago, and one of the requests that came out of that was that we do a one minute update for you all. One of the things that came out of our survey was that we do a lot of fabulous things here at Covenant, but we've got to do a better job of getting the word out. And so you've noticed that flyers have been sent in the mail, and of course that's costly. And we've learned from our young mothers that the best way to do it is through your social media accounts. So uh, as immediately following the church service, as soon as we can get um, Ashley's and Andrea's computer set up, we're going to show, a pre Andrea and Ashley are going to um, teach us how to spread the word through our social media accounts. So we ask you to please stay. It won't take long, and this can be invaluable to spreading the word of what we do here at Covenant for our church and for our Lord. Thanks. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds to worship the living God. Oh, my God. 
we believe that a voice cried out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. We believe that Jesus Christ gives us the peace the world cannot give us. As the church of Jesus Christ, we know that Christ is our peace and that in his name, we are called to prepare the way of peace in our world. So we do justice, love kindness and walk humbly with God. We plant trees for our children, respect our elders, and make art. We choose hope. This is well rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> and peace. And celebrate Christ's advent. We gather at the Lord's table set an extra plate for those who are hungry, and sing loudly with joy. We fall together, rise together, and love together. This is who we are and who we are called to be. Let us pray. Merciful God, prepare the way before us. As those who dream, inspire our hope, guide our steps in the way of peace, Fill our lungs with songs and shouts of joy, and let our love for you and others be genuine. In Christ and the Spirit, amen. Until we know the peace of God, there will be no peace. Seeking God's peace in Christ, let us pray. God of everlasting mercy and compassion, this Advent you invite us to follow you on a new path, yet we are hesitant. We'd rather stay close to the ways we know than to take up something new. We'd rather create our own paths than watch for your way to emerge before us and journey forward in faith. Forgive us, Lord. Prepare and light the way before us and bless us with the courage to walk the paths that lead to peace, wholeness, and well-being for all until you come again. Amen. Beloved, receive these words gladly. Take them to heart and live by them. Christ is the world's peace. In him we are forgiven and empowered to walk in the ways of peace. Alleluia. Amen.
good morning to all of our children and their families who are worshiping with us today. If you're worshiping here in person, I invite you, if you're comfortable and you want to, to come forward and uh, join in this time with our children. Um, I see some somebody coming. <laughs> Hi, come on down. Good to see you. So good to have you with us. All right. Hi. So, thanks for, for joining us. I know some of you from preschool. <laughs> and maybe I'll have you share your names with us just so we all know. So, what's your name? Um, Helen? Calvin, Helen, Oh, all right. Calvin and Helen is your sister. And you are? Miss L. Yes. And who is your baby with you that's with you behind you here? Carrie, that's your, that's your baby brother. Well, it's so wonderful to have you with us today. And we're in Advent, and Advent is a time for waiting. We are waiting on Jesus. And here on our table this week, we have a sign of peace. Do you see this dove? Yes, and there's a peace sign behind it. And doves often represent the Spirit of God and a spirit of peace. And sometimes I find that I find peace when I dream. Do you ever find peace when you dream? Yeah, sometimes. And our dreams may change as we grow. So do you ever go to sleep at night and have dreams? What do you dream about? Um, mermaids and your family. What do you dream about? When you close your not eyes at night, do you ever dream? Do you ever dream, Miss Helen? You dream about your family too? Well, I had an opportunity. I actually sat with some of you and I asked our preschoolers what they dream about. And so let's watch a quick video to find out what, and you may see some of your friends on this video. Let's see what our preschoolers said they dream about. All right, so what is your name? Quinn. Quinn. And Quinn, could you tell me what are your hopes and dreams? Um, Paw Patrol and Boss Baby. Okay, so you dream about Paw Patrol? And Boss Baby. Okay, nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing your hopes and dreams with us. All right, bye-bye. Annie, it's so nice to sit with you today. So I have a question for you. What are your hopes and dreams? Um, a mermaid. Oh, you dream about mermaids? Tell me more. I don't you, 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 you sit with mermaids? Very nice. Well, thank you for sharing your dreams of mermaids with us today. You want to wave? All right. So, what is your name? Bowden. Bowden. And Bowden, what is, well, could you share with us about what are your hopes and dreams? What do you dream about? Oh, you, you dream about a four-wheel scooter? Oh, wonderful. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you, Bowden. So what is your name? L. L. what are your hopes and dreams? Sleeping. Sleeping? And by, or did you say bicycling? Bicycling. And what are your, what else do you dream about? and dress up with your mom. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you, Miss L. We appreciate you sharing with us. <laughs> All right, what is your name? Alice. Alice. Alice, what do you dream about? Frozen socks. Frozen 
frozen sounds? Tell me more. What is? What are frozen sounds? Um, like when they talk to me. Oh, when they talk to you. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. You did a great job. All right. So, what is your name? Noah Blackman Patel. All right. And what do you dream about? Uh, daddy. You dream about your daddy? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice. What do you dream about your daddy? Uh, I'm hoping that he's getting a tiger. What a dream. In a car. Oh, okay. In a car? Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing with us. You did a great job. <laughs> All right. Isaac, what do you dream about? Um, me and Daddy playing outside. You and your Daddy playing outside. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? And Asher, what do you dream about? Uh, ice, ice cream. What a wonderful thing to dream about. Well, thank you. Share with us really loud. What do you dream about? Me and my dad playing wiffle ball. You and your dad playing wiffle ball. Wonderful. Thank you. Lots of wonderful dreams there. And our dreams change sometimes as we get older. And sometimes it's nice to remember those dreams that we have when you were your age. Kaya, you came up here. What are some things that you dream about? Oh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, uh, many of us in this church do still dream for peace in our world. And so we're going to say a prayer. Will you be my echoes? Dear God, thank you for the gift of peace. Thank you for knowing our dreams and for hearing our prayers. Help us to have peace and share peace with others this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Join me, please, in our prayer of illumination. Let us pray. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be focused as John the Baptist preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we'd know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. Today we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully we pray, amen. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Psalm 85. Hear the word of the Lord. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. <clears throat> Our gospel reading from the opening chapter of Mark. 
verses 1, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Again, let us open our hearts and minds to receive God's word. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We heard what some of the children's dreams were. I want to ask you this morning, as, as those who dream, do you have a grown-up Christmas list? I return to mine every year. It's not one I wrote myself, though it expresses some of the deepest longings of my heart. It's not a list of material things but of relationships we are called to forge first and foremost with God. And then, based on that primordial relationship, we are called to forge with each other and our world. You've heard the list, I suspect, played during this Advent season and in years past. The song features Kelly Clarkson, with the harmonies in the background of pentatonics. Here's my grown-up Christmas list. As children, we believe the grandest sight to see was something lovely wrapped beneath the tree. But heaven only knows that packages and bows can never heal a hurting human soul. So the dream is no more lives torn apart, that wars would never start, and time would heal all hearts, and everyone would have a friend and right would always win, and love would never end. This is my grown-up Christmas list. When I met last week with our Holy Hunch Bible study class, and we discussed the scripture passages for today's sermon, I asked them this question. With what does peace begin? We discussed several options. But then we settled on this based on our reading of Psalm 85 and Mark 1. Heaven only knows what we are called to believe. That peace comes first from God alone, and on earth it begins with you and me. Consider what Debbie just read as our liturgist. Psalm 85 verses 1 to 2 speak of the peace God gave God's people by freeing them from their time in exile under Babylonian rule, and by forgiving their sins, which they believed had led to their being in exile in the first place. In verses 8 and 9, we get the sense that the people, now resettled in the promised land of Israel, are not at ease, Though freed from their Babylonian captors and forgiven of their sin, peace within their hearts 
and peace within their community remain elusive. And thus the psalmist prays for himself and, if you can imagine, the worship of God's people, that is the worshiping community that's gathered, the psalmist prays for himself and for the worshiping community to which he belongs. Let me hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their heart. Surely his salvation is at hand for all those who stand in awe of him that his glory may dwell in our land. Do you hear what's going on here? Unless we seek God's peace, Unless we seek God's peace so that it reigns supreme in our hearts, unless we return again and again to the Lord, unless we celebrate God's grace, seek God's calming presence, and turn our lives over to God, we will never know inner peace. And that turning over is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process. Unless we turn our hearts over again to God, over and over again to God, we will not know peace. Without that strong inner core working on us from the inside out and guiding our steps, well then how, how can we even begin to share God's peace with those in the communities where we live, and with others around the world. If it's not working within us, how can peace work in our world? There's another song, song this time of year that will not let me shrug off. Our collective responsibility to be peace bearers, peacemakers, and peacekeepers. I find it most meaningful when sung by a children's choir. For it is truly our children who will inherit the world you and I leave behind. The song was written by Jill Jackson Miller and her husband, Cy. You'll probably recognize it immediately and also be challenged by what it expects us to do in our lifelong quest to live peaceably with God, with ourselves, and in our world. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, children, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, may this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Do you see what a challenge that is and what a remarkable opportunity as well? Will you and I dare to live like that every moment of every day in peace eternally, grounded and forgiven in God? at peace with God and extending God's peace to all those who indeed dream God's dream of a world where there are no more hurting human souls, 
and children grow up and grow old. God's dream of a world where there are no more lives torn apart. And wars never start. And time heals all hearts. And everyone has a friend. And right always wins. And love never ends. It sounds almost too good to be true. But the psalmist declares that there will ultimately come a day when peace and righteousness shall kiss each other and be united as one. There will come a day where God's steadfast love and faith meet here fully, finally, totally on this earth. It almost sounds too good to be true, but it is precisely the dream Jesus brought, the dream Jesus brought in his wake by the life he lived, the words he preached, the actions he performed, the death he died, and the realm God established through him by raising him up from the grave unto life everlasting. Of course, it was John the Baptist who first drew us out into the wilderness to catch the vision and dream the dream that Jesus had. It was John who made it crystal clear that while the baptism he offered was of water for the cleansing of our sins, there was one greater than he coming, the very Son of God, in fact, to baptize the world with Holy Spirit, to forgive our sin, to put us at peace with ourselves to inaugurate God's peaceable kingdom on earth and to invite us to live and to love and to walk and to work in it for what is just, merciful, right, and good for all. I said earlier, we all know the establishment of such a peaceful kingdom remains a work in progress in us and in our world. The news this past week, locally, nationally, and internationally, has proven this to be so. You know the stories that have made the headlines. We also know that if our grown-up Christmas lists are to be fulfilled and the way prepared for God's peace to be established on earth as in heaven, our lives must begin and end and be lived in the middle in Christ. in that hope, with that dream of no more lives torn apart, and where right always wins and love never ends, may we come to this table, to our Lord's table, where hope abounds, where peace rules, where joy lives and where love reigns in us and for our world.
now, and forevermore. Amen. In this busy season, our most important preparations will happen in our hearts when we make a way for God's peace to come into our lives, when we prepare the way of the Lord. So let us now offer our gifts of time, talent, and treasure so that God's love will shine brightly through the ministries of this church and in our own lives as well.
we come to this table, we are reminded that this is the table of Jesus Christ, a banquet prepared for everyone. All who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice are welcome here. Please join Jennifer and me in our great prayer of thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, breath of peace, giver of all life, source of love that knows no boundaries. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began throughout the ages. We have proclaimed your hope for a world where those considered last and least are first and most. Violence is overcome by the power of your ancient love. And all siblings work together for peace. You bring our longings to birth and send prophets to awaken us to your approaching advent among us. We thank you for those who, like Mary, who have the courage and strength to give birth to your love in the world, for those who, like the shepherds, dare to seek out the child of Bethlehem, and for those who, like the wise ones, actively challenge violent and oppressive powers. We praise you that your everlasting light is shown to us through Jesus the Christ, in womb and tomb, in cradle and cross, in tenderness and compassion. O oh God, as we wait and watch for your coming among us, we remember all with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are mourning, who are ill, who are alone, who are close to our hearts, whose dreams have been deferred, whose nightmarish lives are fraught with fear, oppression, or hunger, violence, racism, or poverty. We pray, O oh God, for our church family, its people, and its many ministries, for nations as they strive for peace, for justice, to be meted out according to your will, and for strength across the globe in the face of an unknown future with a new virus strain. God of hope, we ask that you make this bread of life the means of our rebuilding, and this cup of compassion the means of our salvation. This table of peace, the foundation of our renewal, and this community of faith, the place of our rebirth. O oh, gracious, loving God, breath of peace, source of hope, though we are many, make us one in you. Though we are broken, make us whole in you. And though we are concerned about the future, make us rest in you. In Jesus' name we pray humbly and gratefully. Amen. Beloved, we remember Jesus who, on the night before he died, took a loaf of bread, gave thanks for it, and broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink you all of it in remembrance of me. Let us now, as God's people, share first the bread of life and then the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. We thank you, God, for breaking into our world and for pouring into our lives and our experiences. We thank you, God, for this meal of thanksgiving and the stories of love, grace, and hope it tells. Make us instruments of your peace and hear us as we pray, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us, us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, go out now into the world. Never stop dreaming. Seek the hope and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek also the joy and the love. For by this you will be changed. And so will our world. Until that time, when Christ comes again and righteousness and peace shall fully and finally meet. And may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon our world, both now and forevermore. And let all God's people say, Amen. Oh, I draw.